So, is the U.S. Embassy move prophetic? No. I don't see this move of the U.S. Embassy being prophetic in the biblical sense, as we see nothing on this in the Bible cover to cover. We do see something, however, in Daniel chapter 11, verse 45, that can be twisted to make it appear as such, but if you let the Bible define itself as well as match things with historic record, you will see how the Jesuits lie on such things for sinister reasons, so as to keep the people confused. What we see happening with the embassy move has all the earmarks of being a Vatican-contrived political agenda that is designed to appear prophetic, but only to those that trust the many false prophets who were prophesied in Isaiah 30, verse 10, to speak smooth things and prophesy deceits onto their congregation. In other words, if you click the picture that I posted in this uh, blog entry here, all right, if you click that picture, it'll bring you to the article. All right, oops, hold on a second here. All right. And you only really have to read the first section there, where it says the terrorist-linked Muslim Brotherhood, echoing other jihadist groups, has pledged to shed blood and wage war against the United States after President Donald Trump officially recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and directed his government to move the American embassy to that city. One of Rome's favorite prophecies has to be the so-called seven-year peace treaty, wherein they claim will be broken by the little horn in the middle of the seven years, who will then desecrate the sanctuary and wreak havoc for the remaining three and a half years. The Jesuits not only invented that falderall, they also twisted the prophecy that obedient students of the Bible referred to as the week of Daniel to hide the truth about the popes. The prophet Daniel outlined the exact year that Jesus stepped into the River Jordan to be baptized of John, the exact year he would be crucified for our sins, and the exact year the apostles would begin preaching unto the Gentiles, which was also the exact year that the Jews stoned Stephen and the Christians replaced the Jews as the nation our God now calls Israel. How do you get around all those dates? How can you move that to the end of the world? But that's what happened. I mean, if you saw my Who is Israel page and or all the videos, you would know exactly what I mean here. And if you have seen that page, you would also do well to view the new section I placed on that page some time ago to answer numerous questions in regards to replacement theology, where I show biblical and prophetic proof that replacement theology is truth in its purest form. But just as Rome changed the Sabbath to Sunday so as to move many to wonder after the beast, as we see is apparent in the many Sunday-keeping churches today, the lukewarm pastors were unable to understand the prophecies of Daniel being changed. They, they couldn't see it. They didn't know that the Jesuits changed it and took it out of chronological order, ignoring all those dates that were set, and they took that week of Daniel and placed it at the end of the world instead of leaving it inside the 2,300-year prophecy where it was to glorify Christ's prophesied mission for all of mankind when it comes to salvation. Rome's main objective in moving it was to hide the fact that the Great Tribulation was already caused by the popes during the Inquisition. But thanks to all the Sunday-keeping pastors who are unable to see how Rome twisted the prophecies, who by now became their teachers in the Vatican-controlled seminaries, it was also prophesied in the Word of God that you cannot understand prophecy unless you obey the God that wrote it. And because all those pastors refused to keep God's law, they were easily confused by the Jesuits teaching them, and then they went forth to teach all the world to wonder after the beast in doctrine as well as in false prophecies. With all that said, What's to stop this from happening next? The basic reality is this. There is no prophecy in the Bible about a seven-year tribulation or even a seven-year peace treaty. It is only found in Vatican writings that we know have been penned by the Jesuits under direct inspiration of Satan to protect the popes. But, and seeing how this is not a prophetic utterance, and therefore based only on the desires of the man of sin in Rome, if he is allowed to go ahead on this, watch in the coming days, months, or even years to see if the Vatican and their political cohorts actually suggest a seven-year peace treaty with the nations now promising to shed blood and wage war due to the embassy moving. And if they do that, watch also how they will plan on breaking that treaty in three and a half years just to make their agenda appear prophesied especially now that it was just announced this morning that the United Nations is planning to give $65 million to help the Palestinians fight Israel on all that's going on now in the courts. Again, none of this falderall is prophesied. It's all Vatican lies. But it has been an agenda the Vatican has pushed strongly ever since they moved Jesuit-trained Cyrus Schofield to place this demon-inspired seven-year trip theory in his Bible commentary on Daniel 9.27 in the Schofield Reference Bible Notes. Thank you for watching. God bless.